for like a popular metal song, the um the vocal harmony on the chorus is actually fantastic. Oh yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it it's like a surprisingly good like pop song, and yeah. I feel like it's uh it's less embarrassing than a lot of the stuff from that era. Like I went back and listened to this, and I listened to some of the other stuff from like that two thousand three, two thousand four yeah. yeah, oh, era. We, yeah. And a lot but, of that stuff is pretty fucking bad. You know whose material is actually surprisingly good from that era? Uh, Mudvayne. And we're going to just keep talking about Mudvayne. Uh, <laughs> As this we is, this is getting does. burp a ding-ding cast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, of course. But, uh, getting dig. Not like, uh, I don't know, like that, that song Happy is, is a... Oh, yeah? That's, that's, that's a good track. I actually, so I don't like... Um, the dude's like clean singing voice from Mudvayne, like much at all. Uh, he's fine. He's just not good. Uh, it, uh, his screams are fantastic, though. Uh, Do you think I, that Mudvayne and Mud Honey have some kind of something? And puddle of mud. Yeah. Oh, they should go on a tour <laughs> mud of fest. mud. <laughs> mud fest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> wouldn't it be awesome if, then- if we like? Uh, we like stayed with like our first band and uh, became Mudfist, <laughs> and we could yeah. play with them. <laughs> yeah, that'd be pretty good. Yeah. Um, how are you? What's what's going on, dog? Oh, you know, kicking it, listening yeah. to early two thousands butt rock. You know, mm-hmm. um, yeah, that's a vibe for sure. It it is certainly a vibe. Mm-hmm. You know, um. I've been repairing electronics in my home, mm-hmm. being somewhat successful at that. I don't have much to say about it, but mm-hmm. I found a MIDI controller in the rain. What? A few weeks ago. Yeah, it's a, it's a Native Instruments machine MIDI controller. Huh. It's just like sitting in the rain. Yeah. So I grabbed it and took it home and let it dry out for a little while. Um, the USB port was all fucked up on it, so mm-hmm. I took it apart and I cleaned up the liquid damage with some, some alcohol. And then I replaced that USB type B port uh, with a new one and it powers on, but my computer does not see it. And I actually think it's probably a software problem because Hmm. the last time they updated the driver for that thing was in 20 fucking 15. (laughs) No, wow. It's probably just not compatible with Catalina. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to play around with it a little bit, but that was, that, that was fun to do. It was, it was a project. I've seen things you musicians wouldn't believe. <laughs> Toneport UX2's on fire on IKEA desks. I watch soft synths feedback loop in the dark without a noise gate. All those moments will be lost in time, like <coughs> MIDI controllers in rain. Time to jam. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've been doing that. It's mm-hmm. been it's been okay. I've been uh, I I don't know. I cooked some food. I don't know. I got nothing exciting to report. Mm-hmm. Um, what about you? What have you been doing? Um, not a whole lot. Uh, you know, I've been working, um, hanging out, um, watching a lot of news. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know if we should talk about it, but, because, uh, I mean, this yeah. this isn't going to be released until, uh, what's, what's the date today? Uh, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, until the 17th, what's... but... Uh, nah, you and I should talk about it after. Maybe. Um, I'll just say this. Today is Thursday, January 7th, and shit's uh-huh. popping off. Shit is popping off. <laughs> rightly, yeah. Rightly politically <laughs> popping. Yeah, popping straight pop pop. It's a it's a it's a pop and lock. Oh it's yeah, it's a pop and yeah. lock. Oh yeah. And I don't want to get too political here, but uh, I will say our government is fucking garbage. I don't. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. I'm not trying to make a statement about either political party. <laughs> our government is full of fucking morons on every single side, and they're yes. all. All corporate shills. Bastards. Except for maybe like two. But like 
nah, nah, we're all fucked. Like politically, like we're we're not gonna get any nice things that we have worked for or deserved because uh, we're we're fucking idiots. We vote for fucking idiots because we're fucking idiots, and we get exactly what we deserve in America. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people people choose to listen to a lot of that butt rock stuff, and so you know, I've been listening to a lot of butt rock uh, no. as well. Yeah. What, what would you say? So, I mean, we can talk about like best songs and butt rock and whatever, but. What do you think was like the most consistent of the butt rock bands of that era? Like the the one that actually put oh. out the 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 greatest breadth of like actually good and listenable material. Corn. Butt rock? They're 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 new. Yeah, they're butt rock. Like, they were <laughs> 100%. they were they were, they were uh, very I mean, much like proto. Corn, I mean, well, or Deftones. I mean, so, Deftones could fall into that. They, I mean, they could. But, I don't think they do though. I mean, I mean, rock, I think there's something above that. But right. if you're talking about bands that are that get radio play that have put out like, yes I, I'm, I'm talking about like i'm talking about um alt metal bands from the early okay. 2000s that tried right. to get play in strip clubs and okay. i don't think that's corn necessarily i think they accidentally ended up getting played <laughs> in the strip clubs sure. uh, specifically by girls who have dreadlocks oh yeah. and also strip uh-huh. um <laughs> Dude, that's oh, just God. like that's like a peanut butter and jelly pairing, right? God, there. Can, can you <laughs> Classic imagine and being eternal. in a strip club and some girl comes up with dreadlocks in like an Adidas tracksuit, looking like, like Jonathan Davis, and she like they're tearaway pants, so she rips <laughs> them off, revealing a pussy full uh-huh. of dreadlocked pubic hair. Okay. Right during the. <laughs> And then she's like rubbing her pussy dreads up on your face, and you're yeah, listening. Okay. Something takes a part of me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You feel that? I feel that. I mean, I, I'm so excited to return to that once we've defeated the coronavirus. <laughs> I, want, what, I want that to be a why, thing that can happen. You that's know? the only reason I want the vaccination is so Same. I can get weird in strip clubs. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, like. The moment I get the vaccination, I am down in Portland at Casa Diablo. Oh yeah, no. there you go. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so like, I, I guess like if you're asking about the 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 buddiest of butt rock bands of that era, mm-hmm. I mean, like that that does narrow the field a little bit. Right. That means you're you're talking about honestly. I think. Three Days Grace is probably up there, honestly. Really? Like they, they put out some pretty decent singles. Mm-hmm. They're not very cringy upon like looking back. They didn't oh, sorry. get too new metal-y, so they aged pretty well. You right. know? Mm-hmm. Uh, Linkin Park, actually, is probably my real Lin- answer. Link- yeah, Linkin like, Park. I think Linkin you're probably Park actually is, right. That's, is that's... Like, actually a good band, mm-hmm. and I think they put out some good pop music, and they're probably the best of that Right, era. and... Their their earlier stuff was like kind of some borderline new metal with a lot of like electronic elements, but then after that, like going into like the mid two thousands, they absolutely became butt rock and really just oh, yeah. became like the um I mean the the flagship of the genre really I think uh, they nice. were I mean they they yeah they they became like the mainstay on modern rock radio throughout all of America I'd say like them 100%. specifically. Uh, and Three Days Grace is definitely one of those bands too, and you know you got your Seether, Saliva. Oh yeah. Um, well, Saliva, I don't know. Saliva had what, that one song, but they didn't, I don't know. well, I mean, but but they also had. Uh, well, at least the guy wrote, uh, "You know, a hero will save us. I'm not gonna stand here and wait." I mean, but that was that was Nickelback though. That was Chad Kroger. <clears throat> Uh, he sang on it and played guitar on it, but the guy from Saliva wrote it. Oh wow! And and also sang vocals on it. Nice. Yeah, that's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, fun that's fun great. fact. I looked Did at Saliva like two weeks ago, dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! Did you see that fucking uh, that ad that was going around for Google that used nickel? The that used a Nickelback. Yeah, song? yeah. Where he's like holding up the the, the phone or whatever, and I'm like, uh-huh. he's like, look at this photograph, but it's a digital photograph. And I'm like, oh no. Yeah, 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 and it was it was so weird because it was like they weren't playing it, you know, they weren't playing it tongue in cheek, really, like only like a little bit. So it was yeah. like, is this like meta? Is this not? Like, is this like 
what is this? I don't even know. I, and that's the thing is like I I feel like really what needs to ha- we need to meet Chad Kroger because until then I'm not gonna have my mind made up whether Chad Kroger is like the biggest douchebag of all time or just a songwriter I really dislike that happens to be a really cool human being. Who knows? I'd like to know. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, I I. Now that I have an association with the Kroger grocery store, I, I just can't help but think of that. Every time I think about Chad Kroger, I think about him, but I also think about like, like Nickelback in a grocery store. Like Chad Kroger is somehow responsible for like Kroger, King Super, Fred Meyer, QFC, <laughs> Safeway. Like he's just this fucking. <laughs> he's the grocery, grocery king of Canada. He's, he's the king of grocery goss, brother. Oh my goodness, you're right. He's, he he is. is the Lord. It, whose altar I worship. Is Nickelback goth? Yeah, let's say so. Let's say yeah, Nickelback's Nickelback 100% is, goth. 100% goth, Come, yeah, Coming right? from a goth, yeah. Nickelback I mean, is about you got, the you gothest You got Sisters band. of Mercy, you got Susie and the Banshees, you got Bauhaus, you got Nickelback. Yeah. You, got... <laughs> you know, that's that's why I, I, uh, in the goth community we call them Nickelbat because they're like oh, yeah. original bat house. Oh, man. We should make some Nickelback covers in the style of like Bauhaus. Like that would be pretty funny. That would actually, I, I'd be willing to lay down some bass lines <laughs> and sing on that. That'd be dope. That'd be, that'd be Look at fun. this photograph. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Like drum machine goth music. Oh, like, God, just, yeah. <laughs> that'd be so good. That's incredibly fucking stupid. Yeah, it could be pretty cool though. Like Nickelback. This is how you remind me of what I really am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. Wow. It'd be really good. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah. And the... you know what I really miss about 2003 though? I'm gonna be honest with you. Here's What's the thing that? I miss the most about 2003. Can you guess it? Uh, I don't think you can. No. What, guess it. What? Um. Uh, 2003 wait 2003 did you say yeah oh um let's see you were 14 or 15 gosh i don't know man uh your your sg ah oh, fuck you <laughs> no no shut up pepsi blue but fuck you <laughs> <laughs> It took me a second to figure out what would piss you off the most from that year. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, I used to have a, a Gibson SG Special, um, which was a, a fine guitar. I, I never had any problems with it, but it was just kind of a goofy guitar. I got it because I really liked Angus Young when I was learning how to play. I thought mm-hmm. it would be pretty cool to have an SG, and it was for a little bit. And then I was like, nah, I don't know if I think this guitar is cool. And then I bought an Explorer and like everything kind of changed from there but yeah that guitar uh i don't know <laughs> kind of cringe yeah it, it's whatever man it's like your first guitar it, it worked that fine for you not so. my first guitar i mean it was like the first guitar anyone saw you play in public well yeah that well that was the first like real guitar I got. yeah like, yeah the first so guitar it was your first guitar could, like, for all intents and purposes <laughs> like, yeah yeah totally um yeah yeah yeah. Uh, what what else you been up to? Um, that's a good question. I've been watching The Expanse because it's so good. Dude, I have not watched the fifth season yet uh, at all. Really good. Um, Beck Beck just got current onto the, on the fourth season. Him and my dad watched. Uh, they binged the first four seasons together over the past week. So <laughs> Jesus Christ, which is that's like, good though. Yeah, that's you know that. No, it was actually maybe the last two weeks, but that's that's still a good like. It's a lot of television. five episodes a day, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. damn, um, yeah. But I think that's how I watched it as well. So I think the, that's actually how I watched. Yeah, it it's as a good well. show. It's, it's a really, very good show. Yeah, it's really uh, easy to you know binge because it's fucking good. It's like uh, it's like good whiskey. It's like you end up in like, like a, a three day bender that and, you yeah, know isn't going to give you diarrhea. It's you know trick question all chinese buffets (laughs) give me diarrhea (laughs) yeah (laughs) ain't that the truth Uh, yeah and that's that's the thing so covid i think might have killed chinese buffets once and for all oh yeah at least in america well 
Maybe, yeah. I, don't I think know. it has. I definitely think it has. I think that that business model kind of always has legs, though, because like the idea behind it is just to make a fuck ton of like a few dishes mm-hmm. quickly. And they're all, but they're all well. I mean, and then you charge people like so, kind of more than the value of the food to eat it. Yeah, you know? yeah, but like, I mean, if you actually want to understand buffets, so I used to like manage the hot bar for Whole Foods, and like. Actually, understanding sure. buffets is understanding margin mixes and how to create like tempting dishes that are made so fucking cheap compared to anything with meat in it. Because mm-hmm. stuff with meat in it, like you are not making any kind of mark upon that. And if someone comes in and just eats the meat dishes, you're almost always losing money unless you charge a fuck ton your for your buffet, which most places Makes don't sense. because buffets are generally a place where you can get a lot of food for cheap, right? Yeah, hell yeah. Um, and so, like, at, at Whole Foods, it was like, I mean, it was it was an incredible master class on the thing, because, like, we had a dish called tandoori chicken that we would go through approximately, like, uh, between, like, five and 800 pounds a day of. We'd sell that much. Nice. It was absolutely, no, no, it sucked, because, <laughs> like, we were just constantly cooking it, and, like, sure. on production, we would have to make like 30 sheet pans of it every single fucking day. That's a lot. It was it was absolutely nuts, dude. Um nice. Yeah, and each sheet pans like 15 to 25 pounds. So it was, yeah. it was just fucking <clears throat> um absolutely bonkers. But like right next to it we always had coconut rice, which was basically just white rice yep. with coconut milk and sugar, and that's it. And people would buy those that shit in like a one to one ratio. Like they buy a pound of the fucking chicken and a pound of the rice together, and that made it so worth it for every, I mean us. Um, yeah, right. but not for Makes the sense. customer. Like never, never get rice at a buffet. I never, never do. do. Yeah, yeah it's never, such never a get rice rip. or noodles at a buffet. Like if you do, you're a fucking sucker. Or <laughs> you're a or, cuck. Or, or, or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> vegetarian cooks <laughs> soy boy buffet cook yeah right like if you're a vegan or a vegetarian and you go to the buffet and don't just load up on like fried tofu and um like black olives like you're fucking doing it wrong <laughs> <laughs> you, that's my favorite meal dude <laughs> dude fried tofu black olives mm. actually i mean like that's okay <laughs> probably dude that, what guess. do you want to eat tonight you want to go for a tofu olive dog <laughs> uh, yeah it's not a thing that's not a thing anyone eats no <laughs> no it isn't that's that's um, like weird poverty vegan food i mean all all vegan food is like weird poverty food basically yeah kind of i mean it definitely can be you can mm-hmm. make it kind of fancy sometimes but like no, Wait, is it's like, is, is like top ramen? Does that have eggs in it, or is that vegan? No, you can eat top ramen. Sick. Yeah. That's all you need. Although every time I eat so, top ramen, I um I have weird weird digestion problems with it. Oh shit. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. Like I like to make ramen, but I I buy the like the noodles, the like real ramen noodles. You know what I'm talking about? They're like yeah, coming little better wrapped one. round things. Oh, they yeah. Those are really good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like the, the giant box of soba that I yeah, gave like uh, Monty. Like, but I don't, I, don't get, I don't use soba noodles typically. I use uh, like uh, like uh, udon noodles. U- udon are great. Yeah. yeah. So so you don't do ramen. You do udon. Udon's different. Yeah. Udon. Like that's my that's my shit. I love yeah, udon. Yeah. Udon's a, I eat that, that's a wheat noodle though too. Yeah. Yeah. That's wheat. Yeah. It's a wheat noodle. Yeah. 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 It's a good noodle. It's a good, I fucking it's a love udons, thick. dude. They're so thick mm. and like... Mm. Yeah, yeah. I just love yeah, like... A little, little ah, thicker than the ramen. Ah, yeah, it's, ah. good. it's good. I just love like chewing them, man. I just want to mm. like chew on those udons. It feels no. so good. <laughs> so right. So pure. I feel ah, you, dog. I love them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been getting high as shit lately, man. Mm-hmm. Like that's the other thing I've been doing. Like that's why I can't remember anything I've been doing because I've been getting so fucking high. No. Um, that's been pretty cool. You know? That is like, really getting cool. high rules. But, uh, Ooh, you, you know what? Yeah. You know what really rules is uh, fucking clip-on tuners. 
I don't. I disagree. I hate them. I love them so much. I know you do, and that's though. okay. And you're allowed to do that. I just like they look fucking dorky to me. And every time I see some nerd with a clip-on tuner on their mm-hmm. fucking instrument, I'm like, dude, take that shit off. What are you doing? You look like a dork. <laughs> makes me upset. <laughs> Right, like, just dude. get a fucking pedal, dude. Like, what? Why? <laughs> yeah. Why? Why? Because I'd rather just like look look to the side and have something that like works like a piezo instead of a, an actual pedal. And actually, because the pedals like it's hard to find a tuning pedal that is truly lossless. is is a huge problem. I don't know anything about that. I don't care. So, I, I've used tuning pedals for like forever. I've never had any problems. I mean, I mean, they're fine. Like, especially if you have like your noise suppressor after the tuning pedal, but like all pedals, basically, I mean, it's, it's difficult to make a pedal that is like, you know, zero noise. Whenever you add any more metal to any equation, like stuff gets a little bit noisier. Um, yes. And so like, like, you know, it adds a little noise it's whatever having it on the end of your headstock one thing is these things are six dollars a piece so i can just fuck them up and lose them and i don't care i know you go through a lot of them like weirdly enough this is actually the third and fourth one i've ever had i don't go through a lot of them at all and that's that's, over that's more it's more than the tuning pedal the tuner pedals that i've bought in the last okay that's fair 20 years (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you bought one tuner pedal for what, like eighty bucks, a hundred bucks? Uh, okay. So the the first tuner I ever got, uh, I this other band left at a show, and I <laughs> couldn't get a hold of them because I didn't know anybody in the band. This was which, like the MySpace band? days. I don't remember. I oh, I don't wow. remember that band. I think I remember like sending them a message on MySpace, being like, "I found mm-hmm. this tune. This tuner pedal is like, is it yours?" And mm-hmm. then they, I think they either like never got back to me or they were like, no, it isn't ours. So then I was like, what the fuck? Whose fucking tuner is this? So I ended it's up yours with now. this uh, this boss, uh, like TU. Oh, yeah. yeah, the, the white one. one? Or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like the, no, that thing's great. The yeah. classic boss one. So yeah. I, 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 that was the first one I ever got. And that was in like 2005. And then yeah. uh, I had the, I, I still have that one. It's like right over here. It still works fine. Um, mm-hmm. And then I got, uh, oh, what's the fucking brand? TC Electronic, I think. I got another tuner and that one was like cheap as fuck it was like 40 bucks but like that thing worked great and i used mm-hmm. that when i was playing with nostalgia that was, that was fine yeah T- tc uh tc's stuff is really good a lot less lossy than boss um no dude that... boss is the best mm-hmm. yeah boss is the best Bo- boss is all right boss has like i mean I mean, they're, they're, I don't, I don't have con- spicy opinions on their really their construction care. is fantastic and their tones are good uh, you know, they're they're really they're the standard of what a pedal is and should be. Oh yeah, hundred I mean, they're they're not the best, but they're like you know they're they're the Nintendo of guitar pedals. Sure. Skit skit. I gotta get up and get a beer. Yeah, get a beer. I'm gonna make get myself beer, another. Get a beer, get a beer, get a beer, get a beer, get a get beer, beer, get a 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 beer, Okay, um, it's related to current events, and the only reason I want to talk about it is because it's music. And guitar specifically related. <laughs> oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> My God, I can't stop laughing about it. It's so amazing. When okay. the fucking... eagle cries, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, f- fucking John Schaefer from Ice Earth was one of the do- one of the Ice Earth and uh, Demons Dinguses. and Wizards. Do and Demons and Wizards, mm-hmm. which I like significantly more. Me um, too. They're better. <laughs> yeah, significantly better. Um was one of the the dingle bags that decided to break into the Capitol building. <laughs> and yep. now he's wanted by the FBI. Did you see that? He's That's wanted by the FBI now. So good. Which is amazing. God. Amazing. Uh, ima- ima- oh man. Imagine like being in prison and you're like, "Hey, you're new here. What's what's your name?" Um, John Schaefer. Huh. Oh, that's weird. Like, like the like the guy from Ice Earth. <laughs> yeah, that's that's 
me. I, I like your your automatic assumption that people in prison would be familiar with Iced Earth. <laughs> I mean, I don't know anybody in the real world who's familiar with Iced Earth, so I assume they're all in prison. Uh, I it, it's okay. It's very funny. Uh, it's kind of a bummer in a little bit of ways, like because I I do really like that second Demons and Wizards album. Yeah, Here, here's so, the thing. Did did you not know of, that he yeah. was a weird neoconservative? Because I've I have always yeah. known because I used to totally. be a weird neoconservative, and that's what drew me to listening to Iced Earth with oh, him yeah. and Rip yeah. Owens. Like that. I mean, that I remember album... listening to like When the Eagle Cries with You and making fun of it and stuff. Like when that shit came out. Yeah, like, yeah, and I, I made like, fun of definitely. it too, even though like. I actually did believe in like the politics behind that song at the time. I think, yeah, um, I think you like did. the song was so dumb. It's so incredibly dumb. dumb. It's, it's one of I the mean, dumbest. I like, mean, the, the song is called make a... "When the, When the Eagle Cries." Like how uh-huh. that that the. The music video though, where they where it's just him and the vocalist, and they're in this like rubble. Oh, that's they're right. They're shooting it to make it look like it's no, like yeah, one of the yeah, twin towers. Yeah, it's supposed to be like, like yeah, the the twin towers rubble. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. It's really it's incredible. I'm sorry. Stupid. What, what's the name of that album? I totally for, the the glorious burden. Is that right? I, yeah, I think that is the name of the album. Nice. That's uh, a good pull. That's a deep pull, dude. I don't fucking yep, remember. It that. is it's definitely like, the that's glorious not the burden. No. That I that I got into, you know. Like the Ice Earth that I got into was Alive in Athens. Dude. I know, you know yeah, that, yeah. So, so you liked earlier Ice right? Earth, like pre Ripper Owens. I got into it kind of because Ripper Owens, because Ripper yeah. Owens, like I think, is a mm, a technically better vocalist. Like sure. as far as like performance goes, no. But like technically, and like his range is fucking incredible. And so I, uh, he's like the like, Walmart of power metal vocalists. Mm-hmm, yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent. So bland, but so like. Yeah, and Good, maybe we should talk about Ripper Owens real briefly here. Uh, Ripper Owens, um, Timothy Owens. Tim Timothy Owens. Yeah, Timothy Ripper Owens uh, was uh, best known not only, probably not from his uh, stint in Iced Earth, which I think lasted like one album in a couple years. Um, in after which I think Matthew Barlow came back a few years after, right? The original oh, vocalist. I, I I don't know about that. He, he, he left with him for a, a while, I believe. But um. <laughs> Super lame. <laughs> anyway, so uh, Timothy Ripper Owens uh, is known as Ripper Owens uh, from when he was in a Judas Priest cover band. And there's, of course, mm-hmm. the Judas Priest song, The Ripper. Yep. Um, from that band, after Rob Halford left Judas Priest, uh, they auditioned vocalists and they found him like performing in a uh, Judas Priest cover band and hired him. And he is uh, widely regarded as the inspiration for the film Rockstar, uh, which has yep. Zach Wild in it. To go back to a uh, wow, yeah, to go back to a previous meme. We we will never not talk about Zach Wild in this Zach, podcast. All it's right? Zach Wild all the way down. It really is. That's it's, the name uh, of the episode, by the way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, it's Zach Wild all the way down. I guess. Yeah, no, no, no. it really is though. Like, it, it, he is the music world's, you know, Kevin Bacon. He's always just a couple, a couple steps away. I mean, in metal, I feel. Well, I mean, that's the thing. He's not oh, yeah. though. Cause, like, I mean, he's <laughs> that's he's, the fucking he's joke. He's been on tour of with a couple he's people. Not. He's <laughs> only ever been in three fucking bands. Like. He's not actually in bands. He just like he's always been like ubiquitous and around because he's been playing with Ozzy since like the early nineties. So that's true. That's Who's, true. Is is Gus G still playing for Ozzy? Is that his guitar? That's still? a really good question. I don't know. Um, Gus G is really good. He's really good. I love Gus G. And uh, what was a fi- Firewind? Is that his uh, yeah, Firewind. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. He was also in Dream Evil for a minute. Oh, Dream Evil was kind of dumb. Yeah, they were uh, super dumb. Uh, and then uh, he also played guitar on that one album by uh, other Mellow Death band. And they did an album, and you and I listened to it in like 2005, hmm. and it has the vocalist from At The Gates, Thomas Lindbergh, doing oh. vocals. And then Gus G does the guitar solo, so it's like a really cool mix. They're from Greece. What the fuck were oh, they called? I yeah, don't remember. what was that? Melodith um, band from Greece. They had one album with Thomas Lindbergh and Gus G on it. 
Night Rage. That's the band. Yep. Night that Rage. Was, yeah, right that there. was really cool. That was actually a sick album. I listened to. No, a that's shit a of that. sick fucking album, dude. That yeah, dope I totally fuck. forgot about that. That shit was dope. It it's still dope. It holds yeah. up. It's really Does good. It? Shit, um, I gotta check that shit out again, dog. It's a, there, there's some really fast blast beats on that album. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but... so Ozzy hasn't toured in three years, but Gus G was his last guitarist. Yeah. Nice. I, oh, actually, no, like, no, I, I totally take that back. He is still touring. You know who's his guitarist now? Uh, I don't. Zach fucking Wild, my brother. Oh, my God. <laughs> Zach Wild all the way down. That's so dope. It's always Zach Wild. Always motherfucking Zach Wild, dude. Oh, dude, I think his keyboardist is the son of Rick Wakeman? He is. That's sick. so sick. Holy shit. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> it's sick that his son is like a keyboard dude too. That's so weird. When no, you see like yeah, like right, like, like different like, like you generations. Gotta be so weird to be a keyboard guy, but like yeah, like being a keyboard guy's son, it's like being a weird hippie son. Like if you're a weird yeah. hippie son, you never end up a weird hippie. You always like end up like with an MBA, fucking and, like super as a business straight or some like, dumb bullshit. Yeah, boring. You become a mm-hmm. normie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, that'd be pretty weird. That's that's pretty pretty cool. You know, it's it's always weird to see like multiple generations of people that all kind of do the same thing. You know, mm-hmm. that that's always weird to me. It's like I don't know. It's like you get like like a famous writer dude, and then like his son's a writer. I um, hate. Oh god, like Frank Frank Herbert and fucking um, yeah. There you go. His son Brian who, Herbert. Brian, yeah, fucking yeah. Hmm. And then J.R. Tolkien. Tolkien, however the fuck you say it, I don't know. And then Christopher Tolkien, Tolkien, Tol Tol Tolkien, Tol cocaine. <laughs> you gotta pay the troll Tolkien troll. <laughs> ah, fuck! I can't even talk. I don't know. I, don't, I have no idea what you're talking. Fuck okay. off. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe we should get the show on the road eventually. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm Spencer. And I'm Britain. Since 2011. Buckethead has released 284 albums in his Pike series. And we're going to listen to them. Three at a fucking time. This is Getting Head. A Bucket Cast. Parentheses intro, intro music. Parentheses indeed. <laughs> Welcome, bot slogs, friends, and bucket heads. heads. This is episode 13 of Getting Head, a bucket cast. Welcome. An unlucky number. Hey, hey, it, you say it's an unlucky number, but uh, Buckethead was born on the 13th of May. So uh, I guess that doesn't, so make, I'd say, that, doesn't, that doesn't unsay what I said, you know. You you Just think it's it. an un- unlucky number? I think it's a bucky number. What? That's that's bucket and lucky combined. Ah, one word. All right, yeah. It it it. That went like o- bucky balls. It, it went you over those things. The little, yeah. little metal oh, yeah, balls. Yeah, the things that I magnetized. swallowed and got a really nice payout from the bucky ball corporation from. Did you eat the bucky balls? You're not supposed to do that. That's why they had to pay all that money. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know, but you know that's that's why I'm living large right now, still large and in charge. I'm a... <laughs> <laughs> that 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 would actually be a great basis for like a weird dark comedy script. Is just like <laughs> the main character just like doesn't ever have to worry about money because he was one of the idiots who ate Bucky balls. <laughs> Got him like caught in his intestine, and then they like, magnetized together and ripped a hole in it. So like now he poops into ooh, a bag, ooh, but it's okay because he gets no, no, like no. fucking mm. ten grand a month Can, for all right, doing I'm nothing. Sorry, back up. No, 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 no. Here's the premise of the film. All right, so it's actually a romance story. <laughs> it's it's the only adult guy to eat Bucky balls <laughs> meets the only adult woman to be bucket Bucky balls, and they are uh, simply magnetically attracted to each other (laughs) (laughs) that's pretty good Mm. and then the tagline is love 
is we'll magnetic. Bring you together. <laughs> or, I, I think mo- love is magnetic might be better. <laughs> um, where would you um, where would you least like to be found dead? <laughs> uh, that's a great fucking question. Um, I've thought about this a lot. Um, I think like a, a bad place to be found dead is like a a grocery store, like somewhere boring, you know, like somewhere like a gas station, like some, something shitty like that. I think a cool place to die is like at work. I think that's fucking badass. Like you die at work, you're like you're gonna go down as, as legend. You know, like, you fucking died at work. Like, because you were working. You died. Can I um? Can I point out how absolutely problematic it is to me that you pointed out it's not cool to die in a grocery store, but it's also <laughs> cool to die at work? <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. It's, so, it's a... so, so, so if I die at work, is that cool or not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because you're working, it's pretty cool. Uh, but you know, because it's a grocery store, it's not that cool. Because like grocery stores fucking suck, dude. I hate the going to the grocery store. It's like the dude, worst. I I actually love going to the grocery store. There's a lot of people that love going to the grocery store. I know. I there's can't like, hang out with those fucking people. B- really? Like, there's some cool people that love going to the grocery store. Like, no, I'm um, not saying I can't hang I, out. I with can them. tell you. Just like, here's my thing when it comes to the grocery mm-hmm. store, right? Like, if I'm going to go to the grocery store, it's to get things that I already know that I'm going there to get. Yeah. And I'm going to get in and I'm going to get out. I have that, a time limit. Yeah. I, I refuse so, to spend more than 20 mm-hmm. minutes in a grocery that, store. That's fine. I only spend 20 minutes. You've 20 never, minutes and I'm out. I can't hang out any longer. It drives me fucking crazy. That's, that's fine. You've never been part of a grocery store community. I'm just going to say that straight up. And some people are. It's true. And those, I, like, I actually envy those people that are, because I, I mean, I, I do in a way have a grocery store community. I at least used to know several people at the QFC, but pretty much all of them has uh, left and found other jobs since then, which makes me sad. Yeah. Um, But, you know, I used to be kind of connected to my, my neighborhood QFC. Um, But, you know, I'm also very connected to the grocery stores in which I work and also the ones in which I used to work, which is nice. Uh. Because, I mean, a grocery store is a place you pretty much have to go, right? Yeah. So you might as well, like, have it be as cool as possible and, like, see people you want to see and, like, be able to, like, BS with them briefly. Mm-hmm. You know? And, and that's the thing. It's, like, folk, folks like you don't have that connection and that community within the grocery store, and so you abhor going there. And so, Well, there is, know. like, there is a... <clears throat> There is a hippie grocery store that mm-hmm. I keep forgetting is really close to my house. Yeah. And I go there sometimes on my lunch break from work because yeah. they have a vegan sandwich that's good. Ooh. And there's a cute goth girl that works there sometimes Ooh. as a cashier. Ooh. And like, that's okay, you know? Yeah. But that's what, what, what what's, <laughs> what's the name of this place? What? What's the name of this place? Oh, it's PCC. Oh, okay. Wait, there's a PCC near you now? Yeah, it's like a God, tiny they're everywhere one. It's now. So weird. Huh. It's like right next to Metro Market. It's like right down the street. Interesting. Huh. Yeah, it's been there for a while, but I keep forgetting it's there. It's like it's like a super small one. It's very small. But... Oh, I know exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The the that little Sandpoint one. That's like. Yeah. I don't know. It's yeah. It's almost like a convenience store. Like their yeah. deli is as big as the rest of the store. But they actually like make a lot of shit. Like they, they have do. a lot of different yeah. like, sandwiches and stuff. Yeah, like their their deli is pretty big, but the rest of their store is fucking small. It's, it's so strange. small. Yeah, but like I I like PCC mostly for the deli, so that's totally yeah, that's fine. Yeah, the with only me. yeah, it's the only thing yeah. I really like about that. Fucking yeah, place. the deli is great though. They they make a lot of really good stuff. Yeah, PCC is uh you know they're they're a place I'll probably work eventually. We'll see. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you're you're a grocery you're a grocery slut. I am. I am. I'm I'm trying not to be, but you know. Yeah. Getting uh getting an education is difficult. I don't. The thing is, like, I I uh, mm, How do I put this? I'm I I don't really ever want to work somewhere that's not unionized or able to be unionized or n- not working for myself. So I got to figure out how to. 
you know, work all that out. Hell yeah, dude. You gotta make it happen. Yeah, dog. You gotta, we all have our values. We all have to be our own Bazinga. No gods, no masters, all Bazinga, dog. Hell yeah. That's how yeah. it is. Sometimes. Indeed. We listened to three Buckethead albums. Did three we, whole albums. Did we, Spencer? Or did we forget something? Oh, fuck. What? what? <laughs> Every time. I, Dude, I don't, like, how I, many I don't times has this been? 13. It, I, th- I think you've actually gotten it one time, and it was pretty cool. Uh, but, you know, we're that's a solid dozen uh, at this point, <laughs> I think. Um, uh well, I mean that's that's wonderful. I like that it's an organic moment every time. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not yeah. faking this. I like I genuinely forgot. Yeah. Like I do every time. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um Brit. Yeah. Brit, I have I have a confession to make. What's that? I have a sickness. What's your sickness, dog? What well, doesn't matter, but the cure? Yeah. The only cure. Robert Smith? No, no. It's a bucket fact. It's a bucket fact. Oh. I need it. Can you lay it on me? The doctor is in. (laughs) Bucket fact, 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 bucket fact. Buckethead has always played a variety of guitars in a variety of different tunings. However, since the early 2000s, he has primarily and perhaps only played with guitars with 27-inch scales. What? Uh, tw- that is not accurate. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, that is accurate. Yeah, yeah, never mind, sorry, go ahead. Don't contest my bucket facts, dude. I... I I put whoa. Okay, all right. You're whoa. right. You're hard, right. Hard I'm limit. Sorry. Okay. Let me tell you what it, what just happened there. Yeah. I had a bit of a brain miscalculation. I yeah. heard a different I heard you say something different than what you actually said. And the reason why this happened mm-hmm. because I am high on marijuana. Mm-hmm. Okay? So it has nothing to do with the validity of your, your bucket fact. I trust you as as a reliable source, okay? Okay. It was my own brain that caused okay. that problem. Okay. Um, 27 inch scale is commonly known as the, the base scale basically for a baritone guitar uh, yes. baritone guitars go up to like I think like 29 and 3 quarter inch scales at some points but like, uh, not, I have a 30 inch scale baritone guitar you have a 30 inch scale oh wow that's super super yeah. huge um, it, is, it is ridiculous yes that is ridiculous yeah but uh so, so most of them are between uh, 27 and 29 inch scales. There's not a real standardization for the scale. I, there, there are some like 26.5 inch scale oh, really? stuff, and okay. like, that's considered like the uh, like the high end of a baritone guitar. Yeah, yeah, but it's um, definitely like a baritone um, scaling for a guitar in general. Like it's a absolutely. much w- wider uh, guitar than uh, regular stuff. It for the uninformed, so, he, a, a scale length really just refers to the amount of space between the bridge, meaning the place that holds the strings near, Mm -hmm. you know, your right hand on a guitar, and the nut, the spot that holds the strings uh, by the tuning pegs, right? So that length, that determines the scale length of an instrument. The longer it is, the deeper it can go, like the lower notes it can play, and then the shorter it is, generally the higher notes it can play. And also generally the longer it is, the more harmonics you can gain out of an instrument and the shorter it is the less just based on the actual length of a string and by virtue of making music by vibrating strings you know it's like the more by the more room a string has to vibrate the more harmonics it's going to make yes um but so uh the majority of all of his music is in b standard E standard and E flat standard. That sound, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yep. Um. Uh. Occasionally, he will do D standard, D sharp standard. He does a lot of different tunings, but those are the <laughs> predominant tunings he does. He, uh, but pretty much everything he does 
is probably in standard tuning. That makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. That's um you know, you learn that way, you play that way. Oh, and yeah. some people Doesn't are great with, with uh I mean there are some people who are just naturally great with like different tunings though. And a great example is a person we've talked about before and a person who uh Bucketed has collaborated with Will Ackerman, who on some albums plays in a different tuning on every single song. Um and it, that's that's a truly remarkable skill, I think. Um, especially when you're working with like so many open tunings and like such melodic stuff. Like when it comes to chordal stuff, it's a little different and maybe a little easier at some points doing open tunings. But uh, when you're doing more melodic stuff, it takes a, a lot of brain work, and in it's some super cases, impressive. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, tunings are weird, especially yeah. playing in like alternate tunings, open tunings. Yeah. It is, yeah. uh, it, it's weird. It can be yeah. fun, but it can yeah. also be oh, on, weird. On, it can on, also, on like, base, so here's, it's not fun. What, it, on base, it's awful all the time. 100%. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on guitar, like, like, one thing I noticed with, like, alternate tunings, like, I wrote a couple of songs in open D minor 7, where basically I just, like, tuned my guitar to a D minor 7 with some, like, you know, some okay. octave strings. No. And, uh, it was really cool. I was able to write some cool like riffs and stuff, but it like I found that it locked me into a very particular type of sound and I found it difficult to move outside of that without like like you said doing a lot of like serious brain work about like mm-hmm. how to make this make sense in like a traditional mm-hmm. guitar sense if that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah. Was that so was that in like D A um but C sharp, fucking, that's a weird tuning, man. Yeah, I can't really wrap my head around that. Uh. Well, not no C sharp, but there is a C natural. Well, what was the what was the seven in the tuning then, for open tuning? C natural. It's a D minor seven, not a major. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. It's a yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, doke. We listened to the three Buckethead albums. We absolutely did. Uh, oh, by the way, no, no, hold up, hold up. Last time we talked, I made a special note because you said on this podcast you were going to tell me a story about a karate gi. Oh, wow. Okay. I forgot about that. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah, That's- you're welcome. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um. Uh, one time, mm-hmm. I went to a grocery. <clears throat> hold on, hold on. <clears throat> Whoa, hold on. time mm-hmm. i went to a grocery store it's yeah. called fred meyer um fred it's a grocery it's store but it's also like a general home goods store if you're not familiar with it. In Portland, they have like a, a small like auto parts section and garden section and like tool mm-hmm. section things like that um they sell like clothing and stuff as well but they do have like a full grocery area like you would have at any traditional grocery store i went there um, I don't know, get whatever. And I checked out at the self checkout. And mm-hmm. as I was leaving, a gentleman walked past me and then ended up walking in front of me out to the car. And he was wearing a karate gi. Um, like the yeah. jacket part of it, he was wearing like regular jeans, mm-hmm. but the he was wearing like the jacket part of it and it was black and it had, it had, a Metallica logo on the back of it in red, and then it had the fist logo from no. St. Egger no, underneath it, it. No, it didn't. Yes, it did. No, it yes, didn't. Yes, it fucking did. It was a St. Anger karate gi 
No. And I fucking saw that in Shoreline fucking Washington in like 2016, and it blew my fucking mind so hard that I like I just I don't know I don't I don't have a picture of it unfortunately, but it's fucking amazing. <laughs> That's just sick, dog. That's, That's really good. Sick as fuck. Like, I like... That guy's gotta be the coolest fucking guy. Like, wow. That motherfucker fucks. That guy fucks. Pike 37 hollowed out. Released on November 11th, 2013. What the fuck is up with that? Yo, I liked this one. This one was really fun. It was a super fun power metal album. It was. I, it was. Uh, I mean, yeah. It was. It was melodic metal. Uh, yeah, anything. it was like. Um, yeah. It was like melodic riff rock, and mm-hmm. uh, yeah, there yeah. were there were some power metal-y moments for mm-hmm. sure. But like, it was it was like, uh, very much riff rock. Like no real guitar solo moments. Some like leads and some very melodic riffing, but mostly just melodic riffing. <laughs> And honestly, this is one of my favorite things that Buckethead does. Like, I love when he just does like melodic riff albums because these the riffs are cool. I I yeah. liked these songs. I thought they were really fun. One song in particular, I liked a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Mm-hmm. And that song was uh, Trading Post. Trading Post. Yeah, I, I wrote Post about so that good. nice melodic metal song. Yeah, yeah. it's nice. It, it, it's melodic and it's a metal song. <laughs> Totally. I think that that is probably one of my favorite songs yeah. that I've heard so far. I really, really like Interesting. that song. It was um, really so, fun. Yeah, I thought the drum programming was really nice and tasteful. I wrote that this. down too, and the mix mm-hmm. was really like punchy. Like yeah, the drums yeah. were really punchy in this one. Yeah. Um, and the mix and the drum programming was really good. And uh, then it also had uh, a thing that I I feel like Buckethead does a lot. Um, track eight, the closer track of the album, is like a really soft acl- acoustic yeah. closer. Yeah, very, and, very like, melancholy. Acoustic yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, yeah, thing. he, he definitely like always closes. He not not always, but he oftentimes closes stuff on a very like dark, ambient, sad, melancholy kind of contemplative like mood. You know, no matter what else happens on the album, like, a lot of the times he'll just, like, put a weird kind of soft outlier at the very end. And this album is, you know, very typical of that. It's good, though. Indeed. I like yeah. it. I liked Hollow Out a lot. Uh, yeah, I liked track. it a lot, too. I would definitely oh. say that this one is, like, if you're going to listen through the Pikes, this is one of the ones you should listen to. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would say it's... that... Uh, I would not say that the necessarily the other two are as essential as this one, but I would say that this one is one that yeah. you should definitely listen to. If you're going to listen to the Pikes, it's pretty mm-hmm. fun. Yeah. It, I, it has a lot of energy and it has a lot of like melodic energy, which is like I feel like when this music makes me feel the best. Because like I, typically when I'm listening to this music, like I have to be doing other things. Like I, I don't just sit down and listen to music. You know, it's like mm-hmm. I'm like doing other shit while I'm listening to it. And sometimes when I'm listening to this stuff, I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, like yeah. this is not the soundtrack to what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes I listen to it. And I'm like, yeah, like, this is kind of the soundtrack to what I'm doing. And this, like, this works. This is good. And, like, today I was I was running errands and I was, you know, cleaning up my house and I was doing stuff while I was listening to this. And uh, it, mm-hmm. it helped me. It was good. Oh, well, it's good. So, so, you know what this... I think is like the soundtrack to and in bucket land. Yeah. Um, this is what, uh, like the delivery drivers or like the, the, mm, the, like the in park delivery drivers kind of do like, you know? Okay. So there's obviously like a like load of like, like, like golf every... carts that are like driving shit around. In y- the park. Yeah. Cause, cause you know, it, any, you know, like, theme park there's gonna be like one loading dock where like er all the goods that are sold and shit and like used for attractions and whatever are you know delivered to and there's gonna be you know a guy or a couple guys Mm -hmm. who um who go ahead in the park oh probably who cares 
Uh, but yeah, they they like drive around a golf cart and like deliver the different goods to like the different like venues in the park that need them. Uh, and they're the guys who, you know, like, you know, sign all the invoices and shit like that. Um, and this is their soundtrack hollowed out They're Hell yeah. They're, they're doing, they're doing a job and they're Hell doing yeah. it well. And it's, it's, is driving and there's a, there it's like almost inspirational but it's like hey you're doing you're doing a good job you're you're necessary thanks bud Hold you out. are loved you're loved brit thanks dog um shit Give yeah me. listen to hollowed out it's good yeah it's it's not bad um, uh pike 38 yeah which is another pike we listened to, and I didn't write down the name of this one. Uh, <laughs> so, sm- like, sm- I don't one remember second. what it's called. Sm- uh, I'm, Something... I'm actually, I, I need to... Uh, Can I uh, guess it? Can I guess what it's called? I would love for you to do that. Okay. It was, like, The Flight of the Green Dragon or something like that. Yeah, you got it the, the wrongest. <laughs> okay. What was the fuck was it called? Pike 38. The, the name of the album is It Smells like frogs <laughs> what it smells like frogs what we well, then what am i thinking of like what is the name of the first song isn't it like flight of the dragon? yeah yeah so so the first uh six parts are gold dragon part one gold dragon part two oh, so okay. on and so forth but the last song is called it smells like frogs which is the eponymous song on the album okay. and the one it's named after so wonderful <laughs> So I mean, you did get the the title incredibly wrong, but you got the theme of the album kind of right. Um. <laughs> ah, wonderful, uh, in spirit, you know. I was there in spirit. Yeah. 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 Um, this is another almost power metally album. It's less power metally than the first than Hollowed Out. Yeah. Um, um, I'm. Ah, oh, shit. I'm. I'm looking up the date. Oh. Uh, November twenty second, twenty thirteen is when so this guy eleven was days after the release of Hollowed mm-hmm. Out. Yep, good times. Uh, it feels very much an iteration on the ideas that he had in Hollowed Out, but a little bit more metal, a little bit less melodic. Still, yeah. not a lot of guitar solos, but there are some guitar solos in this one. Yeah, it's it's like riffy alt metal. Um. I don't know, like, a couple of the things are pretty tight and really well done. I don't know. It's it's good. It's yeah, just... I, liked, um, I liked part five a lot. That was... Uh, so yeah, that cool. actually, I said uh, part five, probably the coolest song on the album, has yep. some illy, really interesting runs. Yeah. Uh, there was some, totally. like, really cool lead parts on part five. Mm-hmm. Part five uh, was, like, lot... part five felt like, uh, mm-hmm. it felt like a little bit of the same sort of ideas that were in hollowed out but like done in a little bit more of a metal way yeah and so that's why i liked that song in particular and then Mm -hmm. the last song the the uh, eponymous title track it smells like frogs has some fun like down tuned stuff it's like him playing a baritone guitar obviously it's super chuggy and and kind of melodic but also very chromatic in some places it's it's pretty good yeah yeah i uh there, there was some cool leads on that one um yeah like I, I definitely did not think this was a bad record. Like it was it enjoyable to listen it, to. Yeah, um, it, it but it is very somewhere, middling. I yeah, feel it like. sits somewhere in the middle of of the pike so far. Like yeah. it, it's it's what he does best. No, no, I take that back. It, it's like what he does most. Yeah, and that's about it. Yeah, and it, and it felt like I feel like maybe like slightly above average. Mm-hmm. as far as like the stuff he does the most that being mm-hmm. said though i would not necessarily say this one is an essential listening yeah. um i would say this one is like essential not wait not essential but i would say it's uh if you're a fan then yes mm-hmm. this is one worth listening to um but it's not essential if you're doing a, a listen them through the pike true that not essential somewhere not in essential. the middle like if uh if you're I don't know. Is is it time that we define the different levels of like buckethead fans? Because I think <laughs> there's like at least three different levels, right? 
There's like, okay, yes. There's like people that have heard of Buckethead because he played for Guns N' Roses. Mm -hmm. And because of that, they might have listened to Electric Tears. And like, that's about their or, level. Or, or actually, and, and maybe Monsters and Robots. Guitar World magazine. Like, like, there, and, yeah, there, there, there's actually like three albums they might have heard. Like Electric Tears is a, a big one that you and I like first heard of him about. But like yeah. also... um monsters and robots is a really big one that a lot of people have heard of too sure yeah uh and also uh enter the chicken is really big as well and don't uh, forget chinese democracy you know speaking of which bucket head I'm, I'm gonna announce it now time. uh we on chinese new year this year we will be releasing a chinese democracy review with when, uh with Matt Collins of our uh, a past a past guest of ours. Um that should be fun. That's gonna be incredible. That's gonna be fun. Can't wait. Fun. Um Yeah, so this this one's alright. It felt like um it felt like maybe the music they play in the bathroom of a bar in the Buckethead, like theme park. Interesting. You think there's a bar in the book? I I hope there's a, uh, at least a place that serves drinks. At yeah, the Buckethead I mean, like, dude, park. you gotta yeah. get fucked up at a theme park. I mean, what, oh, what yeah. do people do at theme parks? I don't go to fucking theme parks because it seems like the, well, the, off, the, but, like, the, the, the what problem do is do there get drunk. Pe- no, they they have kids at, at, at theme parks, and so a lot of times they don't get drunk, which is the problem. That sounds would, terrible. I know, like, as an adult, like, now, I'd love to go get, like, fucking day-wasted at a fucking theme park. That sounds awesome, right? Eh, that nah, sounds I don't awesome. want to go to a theme park, but I like the idea what? of getting wasted in the day. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's fair, dog. <laughs> that's fair. Um, Pike 39. Twister 39, Land. 69. <laughs> Released on November Wait, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. What? I was stoked for you for Pike 69. Um, I've already jerked off to a dog. <laughs> I mean, just the thought that it exists. I think that's the rule. I think we both have to jerk off while listening to Pike 69. And then we yeah. got to talk about that. We got to talk about what we jerked off to and what it was like. You know what? I'm going to do a weird thing right now. I'm going to pledge this. Pledge it. I'm going to 69 someone to bike 69. I, <laughs> I'm going to at least try to record the audio. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. that. <laughs> Maybe not. That's not weird. That, that's weird and not consensual. Unless, I mean, well, unless you... I can get them to agree to it, I, I will do it if I can get them to agree to it. Well, yeah, of course, of course. But, <laughs> but it's also not necessary. <laughs> but it's not also. Yes. No. Yeah. That's, um uh Pike 39 uh Twisterland November 25th 2013 is that 2013. What, three, three, 3 days after the last one All right yeah 3 days wow look at that oh. um so this one my first note is this sounds like a roller coaster no it's definitely twist coaster. twisterland is definitely a roller coaster 100 percent. it's a roller coaster it has it has its different moves and parts and like mm-hmm. yeah it's a it's it's a fun roller coaster i'd say this record has it. some some shredding like there's mm-hmm. a lot of like tar solo stuff mm-hmm. in this one um not necessarily mindless shredding but shredding necessary necessarily shredding it's like I don't know, pretty cool, pretty pretty riffy, like speed metal, right? So it sounds a lot like Running Wild, like no, up. no, you're totally right. Like yeah, yeah, I was I was gonna say maybe like Hailstorm, but yeah, like Hailstorm just rips off Running Wild, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> all the time. Yeah, yeah, it's it's real shreddy, real. Uh, definitely, almost sounds like pirate metal at a lot of points. And I mean, like, eh. with with stuff like Canal System, Ghouls of the Sea, Gloomy Emptiness, like, this is obviously meant to have a very nautical theme. The uh, the cover of the album, though, really doesn't... It's like a, a hand, and then, like, a windmill. 
and then like Buckethead's face superimposed in a lot of places. So I, I don't know what that's all about because like I don't I don't really get windmills associated with this at all. My opinion is that it is pretty good actually. Like it's a pretty good pipe. Um, again, it's kind of kind of middling in the in the same sense that the the pre- previous one was Pike thirty eight. It smells like frogs, um, but also I feel like it's a little bit more interesting than that one in the sense that it goes a little bit harder on the metal side of things. Like it ends up being like fairly aggressive at points, and there's some pretty yeah. interesting like guitar playing in it as well. Yeah. Um, so I would rank it as definitely more interesting than It Smells Like Frogs, but not as essential as Hollowed Out. I would say if you're going to listen to one of the ones from this, the, from these three, listen to Hollowed Out, and then maybe this one. Um, yeah, that's kind of how it goes. I like that it reminded me of Running Wild. Running Wild is a sick-ass band who you should listen to. Listen to Pile of Skulls. That album's fucking sick. Listen to fucking uh, Black Hand In. That fucking album is sick. Like, Running Wild is sick. I like that this album reminded me of Running Wild because I'm going to listen to some Running Fucking Wild. Yeah, Running Wild's dope. Uh, dope anyone as listening fuck, to dude. this? I mean, the guy, guy in France listening to Running Wild. <laughs> it's good shit. <laughs> good shit. Good fuck shit. Yeah. Brit. What's up, dog? I got a fucking piss really bad like dude I take a piss another one of these fucking things. i'm gonna i'm gonna piss and take a dab it'll be a fun time bye bye you're made of barbus and your name's not horpus it's understandable Truly, dog. Truly. Truly legendary. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, in as much, uh, Twisterland would definitely, I think, be best served on, like, a nautical ride at Bucketland. Sure. Or, Bucket or anything, like, about hell. It made me think of, like, fire a lot. Really? I don't know. But it's like, it's so like nautically themed. I feel. Sure, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I didn't look at the song titles. I just listened to the riffs. The riffs feel to me like no. yeah, they could be nautical. They it could be like a pirate ride or yeah, like was, pirates was, in hell would be pretty dope. Yeah, not, nautical and also like there was some like marchy stuff on like gloom emptiness. Um, you know, cool arpeggios. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, dog. Hell yeah. I'm sad we never got to see Hell Yeah, which was a combination of um, ex-members of Pantera and Mudvayne, I, I think, know. mostly. Is that right? Hell yeah, dude. They, so you know that when Hell Yeah rolled through town, you know they hit that Golden Corral every time. Oh, every, every time. time. You know that, they hit that's that That's why we no longer buffet. have every Vinnie time. Paul. It's because... <laughs> All he did was he probably like Vinny Paul is one of the only people in history to do cocaine in every Golden Corral restaurant <laughs> in America. <laughs> I mean, that's gotta be right, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I'm not. I think there's some degree of accuracy. <laughs> The dude Hell screams yeah. um, buffet yeah. cocaine or cocaine buffet. I'm not sure which. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. So, uh, hey, Spencer. Hey, what's up? Recommend me some bullshit. Yeah. Right. Bro, okay. Okay. It's a movie this time. Okay. Is it? Is it a movie? What it's movie, a movie is this? I'm going to talk about one of my favorite movies of all time. Right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And you may or may not agree with me that it's a good movie. And that's okay. I don't care. Like, I love it a lot. And there's nothing that anybody can say or do that will take away my love for this movie. Mm-hmm. But the movie in question is 2000's Gone in 60 Seconds. It's oh, a no, remake no. starring it's, Nicolas Cage. It's, 
and oh, it's classic uh, Angelina cage. Jolie. Classic and, cage. Uh, that guy that was in Saving Private Ryan, I forget his name. Uh, uh, Gav, uh, Gavin Rabisi? Like um, oh, wait. Um, Who am I thinking of? Oh, God. I, I know exactly who you're talking about. Uh, he's such a good actor. He's pretty Something good in, the, um, in that movie. So, I this this was one of my favorite movies as a kid, right? Like, that Giovanni movie came out in 2000. So, in 2000, I would have been like uh, so, 11. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Giovanni Rubisi. Uh, Giovanni Rubisi. Who, that's uh, what I'm starting. thinking. There we go. Uh, um, so, yeah, I would have been like 11 or 12 in 2000 when this movie came out. And uh-huh. so, I watched it in the theater. I liked it a lot. Uh, I My mom bought it for me on DVD when it came out because um, I had a playstation 2 at the time because i got one in 2000 that was like one i think it was like actually one of the first movies i got on dvd Mm -hmm. Um, and uh yeah anyways i watched that movie a lot of times i thought it was very cool and um then i didn't watch it for a great number of years and i watched it again recently because it's on like one of the streaming services and uh fucking holds up dude it's so good it's so Mm -hmm. awesome it's so like it's fun it's it's a fun movie it is very well filmed like the shots are all really good and like the music is super good and it's super Mm -hmm. like fucking (laughs) cheesy and bad but like in a lot of like good ways it's great it's very of the time of the time of the time i say so here's my recommendation to you it's not necessarily go watch gone in 60 seconds because mm-hmm. like you may or may not appeal like that that film may or may not appeal to you it appeals to me a lot i think mostly through nostalgia like i still think the film is fun but like it's the nostalgia that makes it good for me right mm-hmm. like not necessarily the film so it's either yeah. watch that or just watch a film you thought was really cool when you were 13 like yeah like, that's always good that's always fun yeah you know it because it's probably still going to be cool to you mm-hmm. so, to do that it's a fucking experience man like when i was 13 i was a horned out young man i thought angelina jolie was so fucking hot i mean in that angelina, movie. and you know it, what so, she's fucking so hot in that movie she is, like, she is. you know it's, you know what you know what makes angelina jolie so fucking hot in my opinion her neck that? look at her neck Oh yeah, good neck. Great no neck. one talks about that neck. Like some people neck. have the best necks, and she has like one of the best necks. I've dated women just because they have a neck that I really am attracted to. Uh, same. <laughs> yeah, it's, actually, I mean, like, 100%, a neck like that. I, that is something that mm. I think is pretty mm, uh, mm, 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 important. Mm, 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 mm. Neck, 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 neck. Um, yeah. Bro, what do you got for me? What do you got for me? Recommend oh, God, me. I, got, I got a lot of stuff. Uh, first and foremost, I am going to uh, definitely recommend the reboot of Saved by the Bell. They made a reboot of Saved they by the Bell. They rebooted Saved Dude, by the Bell. Tell me about this. Uh, so the returning cast members they have are uh, Jesse, Slater, and Zach. Um, I'm not going to say their real names because I don't care. They're, they're characters to me. Um, but so all those people are back. Uh, Jesse is like the school counselor. Zach is... The, uh, um, sorry. Jesse's the school counselor. Slater is the um, like the, the gym teacher. And both are still at Bay, Bay Side High there. Um, but then Zach Morris is the governor of California. <laughs> and he closes down a bunch of like... Uh, like low income schools in LA and so uh, he promises to transport the people from those schools to like the highest income schools so they can receive the best education so it's like a kind of fish out of water but also like clashing of cultures type idea where okay. there's uh, you know the, the two I'd say main leads of the show are like a um you know, two POC is like a, uh, a Hispanic indigenous and then like a black girl and like, and then a black guy too. And like, it's super well done and it's amazing satire. It's super fucking funny. It, oh God, it's, it's like, 
it is so well done. I can't say enough good things about it. Okay. I'm surprised, especially because, like, you know, I, I I used to watch a lot of the original Saved by the Bell and sure. all of the iterations of it. I've watched Saved by the Bell. I've watched Saved by the Bell, The New Class, mm-hmm. uh, Saved by the Bell, The College Years, um, USA High, which was done by the same producer. Like, I, okay. I have... I've gone deep into, like, the Saved by the Bell universe for some reason, mostly because my brother's a dumbass and he really enjoys <laughs> it and I just watch it with him. But um, Accurate words. <laughs> yeah. Um, but this is, like, something so different and fucking amazing. It's, it's, nice. it's like, I, I, I just recommend watching it. Uh, the first 20 minutes of the pilot absolutely sold me on the entire show it was like the best 20 minutes of comedy i've seen in any show uh in a long time at least since um oh god uh what's that fucking uh auntie donna's house of fun available on netflix okay is so fucking funny it's so fucking funny. Okay. It's, uh... Is it, I, is it fucking funny? It's... I can't tell you... If you, Brit, if you just, Brit, like... Brit, yeah. Is it yeah. fucking funny? It's so fucking... If you want to... It's, uh... It's these guys who are from Australia. From Melbourne. I think three, it's pronounced three, Melbourne. Melbourne. Shut up. It's three dudes. And, um... They're all fantastic. Uh, one of them, like, I, makes all the music... One of them directs and writes a lot of stuff, and the other one's like a cinematographer and writer with the other guy. And uh, but are they? But are they all fantastic? It's so good. I would uh, I would recommend just googling Auntie Donna Morning Brown. And if you don't like that, you won't like it, and you can go <laughs> fuck yourself because you don't know what's funny. I don't know what's funny. <laughs> More. Morning Brown is funny. Okay. Morning it sounds Brown. funny. Morning Brown. Mm-hmm. Morning Brown. Morning Brown. Morning Brown. Morning Brown. Well, I got a morning frown from this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyways, I don't know. Where can I stalk you on social media? (laughs) You can't. I'm unreachable. I'm unknowable. That's not true. Okay. Uh, at the queer goth. Cool. Uh, also, uh, you might be able to find me at, on, uh, on Twitter, at a bucket cast is that right or is it just bucket cast uh i can't I actually fit. <laughs> hold on yeah I, you i'm bad not this. sure Twitter. okay uh, i don't know how to use my phone shut up getting ahead of bucket cast at a bucket cast yeah at a bucket cast so a b bucket casts truly Drink that truly, bro. <laughs> please keep tweeting. I haven't read any of these tweets. Like, please keep tweeting them. I will retweet all. I of them. I have I have I have tweets set up to go for like a month and a half. You'll you'll notice a pattern in the times that I tweet, because <laughs> they're all just set up to tweet. Wonderful, wonderful. It's good. Ah, uh, yeah. Anyways, yeah. Where, you, where can I where can, where can I where can I find you, you on should. the internet? Where can I find you on the internet, Spencer? Where can I find you? If you care about me, and you should, I do. But if you do, you can follow me at New Metal Karate Society on Instagram. Metal Karate Society. Uh, that's my main thing. I'm almost to twenty thousand followers. Almost. I'm at like eighteen point. Nine, I think, right now. Boom. Um, once I get to twenty thousand, I'm gonna post a picture of myself. You're like, uh, you're like with Eminem hair when I was mm, thirteen. 
So you know, like, it's going to be like, pretty cool. So mm. if you don't follow me, which I don't know how the fuck you would have heard of this if you don't follow me, but right, you know, you're you're you're, you're the the like the level of like um a twenty one year old girl with an, a really incredible butt. Honestly. I know, right? Like right? that's cool. That's, like I'm. Well, is, no, I'm yeah. not quite yeah. at that level. Like most yeah, of those girls, I mean, like with the really yeah. good butts, like they got like hundreds of thousands. I mean, here's the thing that I, I think a lot of people don't realize, and I, I haven't seen a lot of articles about this, but Instagram is so much about butts. Oh, yeah. Instagram is the most <laughs> so butt-centric much. platform on, like, on available, straight it, up. It's a butt platform. It's a sure. butt form. It's a, yeah. it's a booty form. <laughs> like, if, if you have a really nice butt... Oh, speaking of which, speaking of... Big ol' booty pooties, big ol' doody doo boop poop poops, bing bang boom boom, bap a dap bap bap bap, rip a gum boom okay. boom boom. <laughs> a Kim Kardashian is divorcing Kanye West. Oh, dude. Okay, yeah. We, you and I, have not talked about this. I forgot that we haven't talked about this, but it's actually <laughs> incredible. Like the story. So someone told me the story. On mm-hmm. Instagram, and I was like, "Oh my god, I gotta talk to Brent about when did, this." <laughs> when did someone tell you that? Because I learned like four days ago from a like a, an article written in Spanish, and I was like, "What? Why is this Spanish new?" And then somehow, it, like, I, I got it before like American media. Did. I don't know. It was weird. Um. So. I feel like I've been stewing on this information for a few days, but I don't talk to anyone and I'm not like an influencer. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So lay it lay it out. I want to hear your thoughts on this situation because I know there's I'm, a certain aspect where we have a connection to this, which is very it is, it is very funny to have like a very tangential connection to to all of this nonsense. I actually don't know what you mean by that at all. Wait, really? Yeah. Wait, really? Yeah. Uh, so, so they're getting divorced because Kanye was fucking Jeffree Star. Wait, you what? didn't hear that? <laughs> oh bro bro <laughs> whoa <laughs> or at least that's what I heard interesting I don't know uh, weird <laughs> Pretty fucking weird. So if you want, if you want to know anything about that, just Google my name and Jeffrey Star, and you'll see what's <laughs> up. We have a connection. Weird dog. Oh. Yeah. Weird. Pretty weird. Yikes. Anywho. That's 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 like that's that's a big yikes, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Whoa! Like, like <laughs> that's a that's a mind blower right there. I don't even know what to think about any of that. I know <laughs> any of it. Uh, that's too much. That's <laughs> too much pop culture. That's too much. I know, you know what? It's, it's fucked up. That's enough. That's enough pop culture for me. I'm done with it now. That's <laughs> I I don't I don't want anything to do with any of this. I know, it's bad. It's dark. It's uh it's really something. We live <laughs> We live <laughs> in motherfucking society, brother. It's just, it's just one of those existences when you Dude. don't want to have sentience. Everything ah. sucks. Dude. Everyone is fucked. 
Everything is really funny. What the fuck, dude? Yeah, I don't know. Um. Yeah. Jeffrey Star is a terrible person. <laughs> Jeffrey Star is garbage. <laughs> Fucking fuck that person. Yeah. Very much. We played a few shows with them. Back in the day. Oh, dude, you should watch Johnny Mnemonic. When was the last time you watched that? Oh, it's been a while. It's dude, a fun one, though. It's I mean, good it's, as it's, fuck. It, I watched it the other day, dude. Ice yeah. is in it. Henry Rollins is in it. It's what? So Henry Rollins is up in that shit, dude. He has like a a major character in that film. Is Henry no fucking shit. Rollins? It's so That's weird. Dope as fuck. It's really good. You should watch it. Man, you know what you should watch. Is um, yeah. There's so many things you should watch. We watched those together. Shit, dog. Damn, you've watched a lot of good shit. Uh, what you should really watch though. No, I don't have any good recommendations for you. It's all bullshit that I don't like. <laughs> watch recently. Yeah, that sounds about I right. I take it all back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't I'm know. Stop you're... recording in a second. Are you? I think so. Well, maybe we should we should actually do the end first, dog. Okay. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. So I think this is a good place to wrap it up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and we we talked about where we could reach each other. Um. Well, when was the last time you contemplated suicide? <laughs> this has been Brit. And this has been Spencer. You've been listening to Getting Head. A um, bucket, bucket cast. Cast. Stay greasy, bucket heads. Namaste.